Buddy out. I'd say this is a pretty pretty easy call to bunt it here, Ty. Excuse me, this is. Yeah, it's this gentleman. Pickoff move. Not in time. Another good pickoff move. Follow a good pickoff move to first base. Wasn't able to get it there in time, though. So Shipman will go back into the box. Baller comes set. Shipman does square on the bunt. Another pickoff move, also not in time. But it looks like Shipman's going in for the bunt. Squaring a little bit early. Back into the box is Shipman. Still no pitch here. No balls, no strikes, nobody out. The pitch goes ahead, lays down the bunt. Shaw fills it cleanly but throws it into right field. And on the air, nobody's covering third base and the runner's going to advance to third. And just like that, nobody out, runners on the corners for Spanish Fork. Yeah, Ty, I didn't want to cut you off, and I looked up, and for a long time, nobody at third. In fact, the base runner, if you have film on that, the base runner is not doing a good job either. He stood on second base for way too long when nobody was over at third. Everyone just got caught watching. That should have been a third base for that runner no matter what. And instead, it's runners everywhere advancing on the air. A walk and a hit into a double play for the right fielder to ball who comes up with runners on the corners, nobody out. Wasatch playing double play depth up the middle. They're going to go with the squeeze. That button is down to the first base side. Nobody covering first base. Everybody's safe. And one run comes in. It's a 3-2 to two ball game on the bunt single from DeVall. Really nice bunt that time on the squeeze. Really pushed that thing in between the first and second baseman. Nobody out. Runners on first and second, and it's 3-2 to two for the Dons. And that brings us back to the top of the order for Warren, who singled and scored in his last at bat. I'd probably bunt him here again, Ty. Lead off hitter, runner on first and second. Well, Evans is playing behind the runner at first base. Probably a pretty good move. He is. He's going to lay it down. It's right at his head. Fowler's going to fill this one cleanly. Throws it to Evans, and Wasatch finally has an out. It will advance both runners to second and third. Well, two, three, four coming up, Tyler. Only one out. Dart is 0 for 3. Struck out, flew out to left center field, and grounded out to the pitcher in his last at bat. 0 for 3 today. Ty, it's hard to uh, want to put guys on base when it's only a one-run game. I may play just the numbers here and walk dart and see if you can't get a ground ball double play on this one with Nelson coming up. Although Nelson, I already indicated earlier this year, leader in home runs and extra base hits on the year for Spanish Fork. So not exactly an easy double play candidate waiting on deck. Yeah, and leads the team in RBIs as well. Pitch gets away from Christensen. Another run will come in. Another run's going to try to score. Rounds third and will stay at third base on the deep backstop. The Spanish Fork takes the 4-2 to two lead on the ball that gets to the backstop. So still a runner on third base. Only one out. Wasatch brings the infield in onto the grass. Trying to keep this thing close as we go into the seventh. But a tall task with runners 2, 3, 4 up, or hitters 2, 3, 4 up. That one, an off-speed pitch. Misses for ball 2, 2-0 two the count. Into the windup is Fowler. Delivers. That one misses inside. Moves the count to 3-0. I'd probably be careful not just to groove one here on this throw, Tyler. I think Dart probably will have a green light. They're going to just go ahead and put him on, Ty. So 3-0 the count, and they're going to put him on. That'll bring up the number three hitter. And I think they're going to play infield back, try to get a double play up the middle here for Nielsen. Nelson, the catcher, he is 0 for 3 today. Struck out but was able to reach on an air on the strikeout. Then struck out again and then grounded out to the pitcher. So hasn't been great in the box today. Fowler working out of the stretch. It's a good lead from Dart at first. And he's going to lay down the bunt on the 1-3, and it's going to hit, hit him. Did it hit him out of the box? Out, yeah, the bat hit it twice. 
That should be an out. I think that's what they're going to discuss. The umpire in the field is going to come up and make the call. And they're not going to say that he's out. They're going to go ahead and leave him back in the box with one strike. So you, we mentioned earlier, this is a good crew of umpires. When we saw these two coming in, both these guys do a great job. Both of them right on top of that call. It's an 0-1 count. Baller out of the stretch. Delivers. Runner goes. Christensen's going to throw down to second base. Not in time, but they do keep the runner at third base. So second and third with one out. 1-1 one, one the count with the catcher, Nielsen, in the box, trying to extend the 4-2 lead. It was a 2-0 lead for Wasatch going into the bottom of the fifth, but two runs in the fifth and now two runs in the sixth gives Spanish Fork the 4-2 lead. The 1-1, one, one, fast ball, fouls that one off to the right side. It's now a 1-2 count. One, two, again, infield playing in for Wasatch. In on the grass now with no runner on first. Baller comes set. Delivers. Goes with the off speed and gets him swinging. That's strikeout number three on the day for Nelson, the first. Wasatch physical therapy strikeout for Faller, and that's a big one. Puts two outs on the board, and Scott will come up, who had an RBI single to left field in his last at bat. Yeah, Scott, the guy that I think you can credit this comeback on, Tyler Spanish was reeling. He got the first big one to get him going. Chase Blake sweat out of the game, and at that point, the rally was on for Spanish. Nice pitch there from Fowler just below the knees for strike one. 0-1 oh, the count here to Scott. A f above 400 hitter has two hits on the day today. Single up the middle and the single to left field. He's got a two RBI opportunity here. No balls, one strike, two away. Fowler takes a look at the runners working out of the stretch. Delivers. It's another fastball. It's swung on down the left field line. Hooking foul. No balls, two strikes to the second baseman. Oh, no balls, two strikes. Back at it into the box on the right-hand side is Scott. Faller set out of the stretch. Long pause, leg kick. Goes with the off-speed and back-to-back -back strikeouts with the runner on third. The freshman Faller able to minimize the inning. And Wasatch will go into the seventh with some work to do. Two runs on two hits, one error. Two are left on base. It's four to two. Napa know-how. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know-how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member, and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. Attention painters and homeowners, Premium Kelly Moore Paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get Premium Kelly Moore Paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore Paints. Stop by today. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Top of the seventh brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch em all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. Wasatch down to their final three outs. This has been a tough one. Wasatch led 2-0 going into the bottom of the fifth, but then gave up two in the fifth and two in the sixth and now find themselves down 4-2. to two. 
And we have another Mirror Lake Station pitching change for Spanish Fork. Ty, talk us through who's on the mound for Spanish Fork. Yeah, Ty, this is going to be Morley, a freshman pitcher here, Tyler. So we're seeing a couple freshman pitchers between Fowler and Morley. They like Morley a lot down here at Spanish Fork. Nine appearances on the year to lead all pitchers in appearances here for the Spanish Fork Dons. He's got a 3.82 ERA, 2-1 two and one on the year, 14 strikeouts in only 11 innings pitched here for Morley. Really good one here for the Dons. He'll face 8-9-1. It's Bridger Shaw, Garrett Christensen, and then back up to the top of the order, Takarda Bukad. Shaw grounded out to the first baseman and then popped out on a bunt on a great play from Anderson. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Pitch is going to be swung on. It's going to be a ground ball to the first baseman. He'll field it, touch the bag, one away. That, unfortunately, is about as easy as it gets for Spanish Fork. Ball hopped up high like a lazy fly ball, even though it was a ground ball. First baseman basically standing on first when he caught that. Didn't have to do anything at all. Brings up Christensen, who did single down the third base side and brought in a run in his last at bat. He's one for two on the day. Now has two RBIs on the year. He'll swing the first pitch and foul that one straight back. No balls, one strike to count. Morley into the windup. Delivers. Nice off-speed pitch in there for strike two. Again, pitching change brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Stop on into Mirror Lake Station over in Camas. Owners David and Kristen Wade have grown to love their Chevron family. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss for strike three. First strike out of the game for Morley. Nine strikeouts now on the day for the pitching staff of Spanish Fork. Eight strikeouts on the day for Spanish Fork. So Watts that's down to their final out. It'll be Carter Bucod. He's 0 for 3 today with a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Misses outside for ball run. Runs today brought to you in part by Physical at the Fit Stop. You sometimes feel dizzy or unstable. If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607. For a free fall risk assessment, let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. Second pitch is in there for a strike. 1-1. One, one. Now the count to the senior Bukad. Goes to the off speed. Misses outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. The 2-1. Swung on. It's going to be another ground ball to the second baseman. He has to go deep into the hole. It's a high chopper. Quick move. Throws to first. Not in time. And Card Bucat has an infield single to extend the ball game. And it does bring up the tying run in Blake Sweat. Yeah, Wasatch had already one real high chopper from Bridger Shaw that did not work out for him. That one from Bucat, a high chopper, but just enough off the first baseline that it ends up being a hit. Second baseman couldn't do anything but just sit back and wait for that ball to come down. Just enough time for Bukad to hustle down the line and keep this game going. They're not going to hold Bukad on at first base. They're going to leave the first baseman off. See if they put Bukad in motion. His run doesn't matter, but it's nice it. not to have the force up the middle. 1-0 the count. Blake Sweat is 0-3 today with a couple of Ks. Tied that hit Swing and a miss. from Bukad, though, is a big deal because you've got the power of Wasatch's lineup coming up. Sweat has a home run on the year, as does Riker Evans. Swing One swing could tie this up. Swing and a miss. 1-1 one, one the count. The pitch. That one's upstairs. Ball two. Two balls, one strike to the junior Blake Sweat. Nine hits now on the day for Wasatch. The 2-1. Swung on and missed again. That moves the count to 2-2. Two, two. Morley had a pretty good breaker earlier in this inning, Ty. See if he goes for that to try to put this game away. Goes upstairs instead. That'll fill up the count at 3-2. This will give Carter Bucad a head start with the full count, two outs. Three balls, two strikes, two away. Wasatch down to their final out here in the top of the seventh. The pitch upstairs. That'll be ball four. And now the leading, or excuse me, tying run is on first base. 
and brings up Riker Evans, who's two for three today with a run scored. Yeah, and Evans has covered the field, Tyler. Single down the right field line, single down the left field line, both line drives. And if he can hit a gap here, Tyler should tie this thing up. Two hits apiece for the three, four, and five hitters that are now up for Wasatch. That pitch is in there for strike one. Baxter with two hits, Mahoney with two hits, and Evans with two hits. It's Riker Evans in the box right now. Runners on first and second. Wasatch needs to score both to extend the ball game. The 0-1 goes back to the off speed, misses low for ball one. 1-1, one, one, now the count. Still working out of the stretch is Morley. Delivers, misses, 2-1, now the count. First walk of the ball game, Tyler, was that one to Blake Sweat from the Spanish Fork pitching staff. That'll keep you in ball game, Ty, even games. though they've given up eight hits, nine hits, excuse me, on the game. That one's in there for a strike. Ties up the count, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Good leads from both Bucad and Sweat at Spanish Fork. Playing off, trying to cover the ground with two outs. Morley sets, delivers the 2-2. Bucad's going to go, but it doesn't matter. It's an upstairs fastball for strike three, and Wasatch will fall 4-2 to two to the Spanish Fork Dons. We'll have your Timberline Ace Hardware postgame show coming up right after this. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit UCCU.com and elevate your banking experience. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. As your locally owned Ace Hardware, Timberline Ace Hardware is committed to being the helpful place by offering our customers personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience from local experts who know you best. That's Timberline Ace Hardware. Wasatch Falls 4-2 to two to drop now eight in a row and are now 0-5 in region play. 2 and 14 on the year. Ty, throw it over to you for our Timber, or excuse me, 3 and 14 on the year. Throw it over to you for our Timberline Ace Hardware post game show. Or, or, sorry, our Gordon Law Group game recap. Well, Ty, this was a tough one for Wasatch to swallow. Second straight game, one against Spanish, one against Orm, that Wasatch really had it in a good spot heading into the later stages of the game, leading by two in this one. They were up two against Orm as well, and both games got away from them, unfortunately. Tyler Wasatch went ahead 1-0 in the first on a nice string of two out hits. Tyler Evans, Baxter, and Mahoney each got a hit with two outs, and that scored the first run. And then Wasatch held Spanish Fork scoreless in the next four innings, Tyler. Each inning, Spanish got at least one base runner, and in three out of the four, they got two base runners. But Blake Scott was able to work out of the jam every time and uh, keep them scoreless. Into the fifth, Wasatch would tack on another run. After Jacob Bradshaw started off the inning with an Arb or excuse me a bunt single, and he was driven in on a single from Garrett Christensen, Wasatch went ahead 2-0. But unfortunately, good teams will punch back at you, Tyler, and that's what Spanish Fork did. Heading into the bottom of the fifth, Blake Sweat was humming, but Spanish Fork was able to get a couple singles on him. And with one out, Coach Jacobson decided that uh, the first RBI single, it made it 2-1 from Scott of Spanish Fork, Sweat was at about 89 pitches, Tyler, and that was the time to make a move. 
And unfortunately, the next batter hit a double off the wall, tied it up 2-2 two two at that point. Wasatch was able to get out of the inning tied at 2-2. Two to two. And then they started off. This was the key moment of the game, Tyler. I'm going to call this the Doria Sano key to the game. Wasatch went into the top of the six after Spanish had just scored two to tie it up. And Wasatch went with three straight singles. Riker Evans started off the inning with a single. Baxter got a single. And then Mahoney got a single as well. So Wasatch loaded it up with nobody out. Braxton Fowler came to the plate, hit a laser to right center, and it was caught, unfortunately. Baxter did not tag up at second base. He was thrown out. And then Wasatch got out on the next player and uh, got out of the inning with no runs. And that really was the key that kind of ended the game for Wasatch at that point. Tyler, a great threat to go right back up on Spanish Fork. Unfortunately, the Dons came back at Wasatch. And in the sixth, they were able to take advantage of poor fielding from Wasatch. Tyler, they got a leadoff single, went to a bunt, had an error on that bunt. Then the next hitter bunted again. And it's not going to be an error in the book, but it certainly was a mental error from Wasatch. Nobody was in the right spot. Spanish was able to load up the bases and tied. They pushed across two in that inning. Went ahead 4-2. Braxton Fowler actually did a good job pitching out of the jam. At one point, it was 4-2 with runners on second and third and only one out. And Fowler struck out two straight batters to get out of that jam. But at that point, the damage was done. Wasatch went down quietly in the seventh. Tyler Bucat and Sweat did get on base. But Wasatch really never had a chance threatening to put those guys across. And they lose 4-2 to two in another tough heartbreaker. The Gordon Law Group's your full-service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. And again, want to remind you, Bank of Utah has accounts for everyone from personal and business, checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South. And together, we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender member, FDIC. And our sponsor of our standout performer today. Ty, the number that really will beat you up in this one, you look at the box score, Wasatch should have scored more runs than they did. Nine hits on the day for the Wasps. And out of those nine hits, they were only able to push across two runs. And that's really, they need to find a way to manufacture a few more runs if they want to be a little more competitive. They out-hit Spanish Fork. Spanish Fork, six hits and four runs to go with that. When you look at the freebie number, Tyler Wasatch had five walks, one hit by pitch, and two errors. And so eight freebies again for Spanish Fork as far as base runners go. And, and that was the difference. I think that tells the story of the game. And lastly, a good spa day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa and our sponsors of our play of the game. Ty, there's a lot of bright moments in this game, I felt like. The double play uh, from Fowler Bukad to Evans is a standout defensive moment in my mind. But I love the two-out hitting. And so when Grant Mahoney got that RBI single in the first, that, that's just something that I feel like you got to highlight and reward. Guys that can get hits with two outs and with runners in scoring position are going to help you win ball games. So I'm going to give that nod to Grant Mahoney. It's a busy day for us tomorrow. Wasatch is back at it with a quick turnaround. They'll have Spanish Fork at home tomorrow at 3.30, and then we'll have boys lacrosse action as well on 94.5 The Peak at 7 o'clock. I want to thank you for listening. Wasatch Falls 4-2 to two to the Dons here on KTMP. You've been listening to High School Baseball on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network.